So just a little tip about, someone asked about question one and how to figure all this out. And so they have something, they've done something similar in the book about the, um, this market has two firms, well, this firm that has two markets. You have market number one, market number two. And so they're uh, price discriminating or considering price discriminating. So you can see that you have this, uh, my blue lines are, or sorry, my red lines are what's happening in market one. So you've got a demand curve there and a marginal revenue curve there. You have a demand curve two, a marginal revenue curve two. And so it's looking similar to what they do in, well, in that whole section in chapter 14 about third degree price discrimination, which starts on 595. And I kind of gave you a picture that sort of looks like figure 14.8 on page 600. So yeah, if you look at page 600, you'll get a, a picture that looks similar to what I've done here in question one. There's one difference that I think is, well, I could tell because of the, when the student emailed me. Um, everything that they've done in, in the example in the book is if you look at, if you look at that figure 14.8, earlier on, we say, well, for profit maximization, you should allocate your sales of total output such that the marginal revenue in total equals marginal cost, equals MR1, equals MR2. You can come to some conclusions about how to figure this out if all you do is follow the example in the book and just look at the pictures because they, ha they have this constant marginal cost. So they have this marginal cost line, and it's just this straight, you know, horizontal line here. You know, we say, well, okay, so you figure out where the marginal revenue total is and where this marginal cost is, and you figure out that's 500. And then what the book does in their example, and again, I'm not giving anything away because this is exactly what the book does, is the book says, okay, if you know that the marginal cost is 20, if you know that at the optimum, where when marginal revenue and marginal cost intersect, that that's associated with the marginal cost of 20. Well, they take this and they kind of, again, if you're not, if you're not paying too close of attention, you just might think, well, here are my individual market one and market twos, and I've got this horizontal line, and I'm going to kind of just carry it over, and I've got, you know, $20 over here too, and I see, well, the, if the marginal cost in the, at the optimum is $20, then, well, all I need to do is figure out where does, where does MR1 equal $20? Where does MR2 equal $20? So that's what we, that's what we want to do. Now, the question that I gave you is a little bit trickier because you don't have constant marginal cost anymore. You have a curve like this. Bear that in mind that what, what, I'm in, what we end up doing is we say, okay, at this, at this optimum, I want, to make sure, I want to make sure not just that my two marginal revenue lines hit where this line hits, but I want to make sure that I'm finding where MR1 equals $20. Where does MR2 equal $20? Because at the optimum, the marginal cost has to be $20. So um, when you have a curvy marginal cost line like this, well, the marginal cost is not constant anymore. I mean, it's $20 at some times, it's $30 other times, it's $10 other times. So the hint that I gave the student that emailed me, if you do it the right way, then you should end up saying that the total output here was 500 units. And what I found out in the, what I did in the book was to find that in market one, the optimum is to sell 200 units. And in market two, the optimum is to sell 300 units. And hopefully that's not too shocking because you say, well, the, out, the combined output from market one and market two equals the total output that ends up here. If you do it, so that should be true in this question too. I mean, you should come to some conclusion that um, I might even ask you. Yeah, how much total output should the firms produce for both markets combined? So you should get an answer there that for the total amount of output for this firm should be this much quantity. And then how should that output be allocated between markets one and two? Well, those should add up to be what the total output is. I mean, the amount of output that you give to market one plus the amount of output that is allocated to market two, those should add up to be the total output. If you solve it incorrectly and you end up seeing, well, if you end up where the output in market one plus the output in market two does not equal what you think the total output should be, then you may have done something wrong. So I think that's probably as much as I want to, much direction as I can give on that one without giving way too much away.